we all know that when you want to hold a camera steady, when you want to go for a long exposure, when you want to concentrate on your composition and get ultimate stability, you can't beat one of these. However, one of these, they're big, they're bulky, they're heavy sometimes, and we don't genuinely love carrying them that often. I use them as often as I can, but sometimes you're not allowed to, sometimes it's impractical, sometimes you're walking a long way and you want to really save on weight. So I thought today we'd look at some of the alternatives to the big tripod in the way of some of the stuff I've amassed over the years and I've got here. Um, first out of the blocks is going to be these two, of course. I did a test, very, very brief test of them uh, a few months back, and that's the, the little Platypod Ultra and its big brother, the Platypod Max. Um, we'll start with those. We'll have a look at table tripods. This uh, lovely old Velbon one, I think it's great. We'll give it a proper, proper test, proper run. The almost identical looking Leica equivalent. Um, identical looking, not identical in price, but we'll see how it compares, how it works. The Manfrot Manfrotto clamp, uh, which you can fit a ball and socket head on there. The good old fail safe for all nature photographers, a bean bag. The lighter alternative, the green pod. Um, the green pod differs from the red pod, which is the one you probably see most of in that the screw thread is at the back of it here. And finally the Gitzo sort of mini tripod. It's not huge, it goes to about yay height, but we want to put it through, put them all through their paces. And what we're going to do is try the same ball and socket head in each, on each, and put a DSLR on top of that with a range of lenses. See how practical they are, see how the usable they are. Uh, push them a bit further than maybe they're designed to be pushed and see how they all compare. So let's just take a quick look at the contenders today. Uh, mostly the heights, how low they go, how high they low, and importantly what they weigh because the, the whole point of carrying a small tripod or tripod substitute is not to be carrying too much weight. So let us start with the gorgeous little Platypod uh, Ultra, uh, available from Dale Photographic. This little beauty weighs is six millimeters high, minimum height, maximum height 45 mil high if you screw the feet up. You've got to remember with this it does need a separate head but without any head just as it comes there it weighs 111 grams that is all of course adding a head adds to the lowest and highest heights of it i haven't included any heights for that because you can get tiny tiny heads you can get quite big heads it just depends on how much you're supporting you know that as well as i do let's look at the second uh contender let's say is the big brother to the uh, Platypod Ultra. This is the Platypod Max, uh, designed to take full DSLR cameras with slightly longer lenses. I would say the Ultra is absolutely perfect for mirrorless. This is if you're going to put a, uh, a full frame DSLR camera with say a 70 to 200 2.8 lens on, this is probably the one you might go for. Again, minimum height six millimeters, again, maximum height 45 millimeters exactly the same as with the ultra a bit heavier this one at 359 grams on my kitchen scales so these are not official weights these are what i've weighed of course if you're going for the bigger platypod you may be putting a heavier camera on it you may be putting a bigger lens on it you may end up having to go for a slightly bigger beefier ball and socket head just bear that in mind the next is the ubiquitous table tripod for want of a better name this one's actually the Felbon MP430 no longer made I'm pretty sure uh, I saw one on eBay recently and yeah they're cracking little tripods the, the head comes with it that said that head is actually removable and you can replace it with any other head 
height is fixed of course at 180 millimeters weight is a total of 307 grams so it's it's in the platypod max ballpark but it does come with the head for that weight as well so you are you're dealing with something quite light next table tripod up is the Leica table tripod and the reason they're both here is that they do work in although they work in similar ways it's that sort of giant wing nut at the bottom that you you undo the legs splay slightly differently between the two and that might be more evident later this is a, a fixed 115 millimeter again depending on height of ball and socket you've got to add that on it and it's a, a mere 186 grams so it's a lovely light alternative yet again but of course it needs the head here I've put the big head on it if you put a smaller head on you get a lower working height moving on to the green pod uh, super little device it's uh, got the fixed screw at the back of it so you can't you don't need to put a ball and socket head on it's got a working height of around 60 millimeters you can't really take or add to that uh, you squish it a bit and give, give yourself another couple of millimeters and it, it weighs about 298 grams not quite the lightest here but you don't need a head in using it it's great you screw the camera on the back of it you put that little strap around the lens to stop the whole thing from moving around too much it's a little bit restricted in sort of pointing it up pointing it down it will work in portrait format as well as in landscape format but this is the way it works best the good old double bean bag um, this one I got from wildlife watching supplies um, super bit of kit if you're on a safari shooting over a car door and you want to support a 600 millimeter lens um, it's got a measuring the height isn't exactly easy it's somewhere between 70 and 85 mil as I've got it here but you could put it the other way up and you could get a bit more height not really what it's designed for however uh, and this is where we, we've got to look at what you stuff it with this is filled with polyethylene beads which do, does make it it's what they recommend not polystyrene they're the little squishy ones polyethylene beads it does make it quite heavy this comes in at two kilos it's not a lightweight piece of kit that replaces a tripod it's something you use because it works better than a tripod however here it is the little Manfrotto clamp um, a brilliant device used by film crews all over the world height is not really measurable from the top of the clamp jaws to the tripod mount is 35 millimeters but it depends on what you clamp it on I mean this is designed to be clamped on cars to be clamped on scaffold poles to be clamped on anything door frames it works brilliantly it's not that light surprisingly it's 475 grams which does make it a little bit weighty plus of course a, a head but it's a great beater kit and finally we look at the Gitzo GT530 uh, again I don't know if this is currently available but little tiny tripods like this are still available this is a proper little baby it will support remarkable amounts of weight it has a minimum height of 273 millimeters less than a foot it has the benefit that it actually has a maximum height because it does have extendable legs it does have a little center column it's got a maximum height of 668 millimeters all for 383 grams that's very very lightweight indeed plus head of course uh, I wouldn't try and stick too much weight off the center column um, from the stability point of view but it is a brilliant brilliant little device for going around towns next we're going to try uh, what I describe as the pew test uh, it's when you go into a church and you're not allowed to put a big tripod up and you want to rest your camera on the end of a pew and see which of these devices works best so let's give that a go next okay so this is the pew test now I don't have a church pew in my back garden but I do have this ladder 
and it's about the same width, four and a half inches across there. We're going to try each of the supports and each of these little mini tripods on this, see if it even works. We've got the little Velbon tripod here on a broad, good, solid base that's wide enough. It's as stable as a rock. But if we try and put it on our pew base, our pew end, just doesn't do it. So we've switched the Velbon tripod now for the Leica one uh, with a fairly hefty Gitzo ball and socket head, but stability is unmatched on the solid base. Now with the Velbon head tripod, when we moved it back to there, we had an issue. But the Leica tripod has a little trick up its has a little trick up its sleeve. If we just loosen the base a bit we can narrow the angle, and this doesn't work on the bell bomb one, of those legs. It's a bit scary. I wouldn't do this at huge altitude, but it's stable. It's staying there. It's not going anywhere. Works well. And there's full, just put it back there because it's a regular ball and socket head, there's full camera movement. You can lock it in any position you like. And of course, unlike with the bean bags, certainly if you use an L bracket, again, you've got brilliant stability in either the landscape or portrait formats. Okay, so the baby gets so, um, a really versatile tripod because it does go high, of course, or, or higher than some of the others. On the narrowish wall, what's that? Foot wide, it's unquestionably as stable as anything. I'm not going to attempt it on the, you know, as well as I do. It's never going to work on that. So, no, not one for pew ends, but great stability if you've got. Uh, 10 inches to a foot in width. Okay, so next we've got the, the big platypod, the platypod max. I haven't put the feet in at the minute, it's just resting on the base. Of course, it's going to be stable on a, a level concrete surface. And unsurprisingly, equally as stable on the pew. It's only the pew that's moving, not the uh, base. But yeah, just as stable on your pew. Um, rock solid, works really well. Onto the baby brother, the Platypod Ultra. It really is at the long end of its workability, trying to stick a big ball and socket head and a full frame camera with a long lens on it. But, once it's settled, it works and it's stable. And of course, passes the pew end test with inches to spare. So next up, we've got the green pod, the little one, with the screw fitting at the back and the strap around the lens. On our regular base, lovely and solid. On our pew end, lovely and solid. It's good. Tipping it up and down, not so easy, but for pure support, it works quite well. All right, the big bean bag going to mould itself to anything you lay it on. So it is stable, rather like the little green pod, tilting it up, tilting it down. You've got a limited amount with this you can actually do because it rolls and it will hold. Of course on the pew, equally no problem at all. It's accuracy of uh, angle pointing up and down that becomes the issue. Vertical is no more difficult than, horror, than landscape. So they're good. Are they perfect? We'll see. Okay, the little Manfrotto clamp here. If your pew's got a lip, you're gonna be able to mount it on that. As it stands, total failure. But you can see here, if you've got just a little lip, you can clamp it on, it's like a rock. It'll go in any position. You can shoot pretty well at any angle. And it's just amazing. That's why so many of them get used in the film industry. They are terrific with their limitations. 
doesn't quite manage the end of the pew, as I say, unless it's got a lip to hold it. So my three favourites for the pew end test, the little Leica tripod, absolutely brilliant, works really well, and both the platypods. Some of the others work okay, but these are the three I would choose for that. So we've had a look at how these little tripods will sort of work on pew ends and seen how stable they are on, on a firm surface. But most people think of them as a way of holding a camera in an emergency. But how much will they hold? What do I mean by that? This is the Nikon 200-500mm to lens on a full frame camera. Will they really work on this? Let's give it a go. Okay, starting with a big bean bag. What do I need to say? That's what they're designed for. Holding big lenses and giving you support, that little bit of movement if you need it, it's perfect. And of course it holds something this size, it'll hold something way bigger as well. I know how ridiculous this looks. The gimbal head on the little Platypod Ultra with a 500mm lens on it. I am going to allow myself just to put a finger there to enable me to show you because it skids. As you can see. But it actually works. It holds it and it holds it dead firm. If we crank that up and we crank that up, that is pretty damn solid. A little bit of rock on there. Let's just shorten the leg a bit. That's now perfect. It's crazy, but it actually works. Okay, so we've got the big platypod. You don't need me to tell you really, do you? Of course it works. If the little one works, the big one's gonna work even better. Um, it's got a bit more bulk to it, so I can get away with spinning it round. The only thing you've gotta watch is you've got the uh, platypod feet in and you've got the spike sticking up there, it can just catch. It's life, isn't it? But it, yeah, it holds it, it holds it brilliant. Solid, really, really solid. Okay, so the baby like a tripod. Very first time I saw one of these tripods, it was used by a sports photographer with a great big lens. And I thought, that's gotta be a setup shot. It isn't. It's perfect. Holds it, balances, holds it firm. Just perfect. The small get so much as with the Leica, you know it's gonna work. And it does. Downsides, not a lot. It just won't go lower than that. Upsides, it will go higher than all the others. So uh, another cracking little tripod works with the most ridiculous lens. Don't try using it in a Force 10 gale, but fantastic. Okay, the little Velbon. In terms of stability, it works great. In terms of practicality, because the head's on it, you can change the head, but it comes with the head. And with a lens of this length, it's not really up to the job. So the leg bit, brilliant. The head is not gonna support with ease a great big lens. You're better off with adding the cost of a gimbal to that. Okay, so that leaves us with these two. Uh, it's not gonna work with that. It really isn't. You're not gonna get a 500 mil lens on a little pod like that, but it's so light, it's a fantastic piece of kit. Just not for this. This, it would work the same way as it did before, providing it's got a solid thing to clamp on, that'll hold the house, it'll hold anything. But uh, I don't think the edge of my garden wall's quite made for a 500mm lens, so I'm not going to try that. So, simple question, which one's best? Simple answer, none of them, or all of them. If I was going around a city and doing a bit of night photography and wanted something really, really light to carry, but to give me a bit of height, it'd be the Gitso. That little tripod that will go up to, you know, a couple of feet. You can rest it on things. You can, if need be, hold it against walls. It works well. It's stable enough. It will work with full frame. It's fantastic. 
but downside it doesn't quite go low enough for some stuff especially if you do a lot of nature photography um, and it is a tripod the little Leica I've got a soft spot for this I bought this when I was a teenager I spent half a week's wages on it um, nowadays I don't know if they still make them the last one I saw was nearly a hundred pounds just for this it's ridiculously expensive it's ridiculously good I've held a Pentax 6.7 against the column of a cathedral for a one minute exposure and printed it 20 by 16 pin sharp it just does the job and it does the job great of course it needs a head as well it's not that heavy it will fold up and go in a bag and of course you've always got the head problem with all of these three you've got to have a head with it so a fantastic fantastic little tripod it would certainly be in first or second place if I was really forced to have a, a league table the beanbag if you're a nature photographer so just get one they are brilliant they're whole big lenses they support a lot of weight they go over the edges of cars they go on the ground you can fill them up with rice if you're traveling abroad but that which is full of polyethylene beads not polystyrene because they're uh, spongy polyethylene beads that weighs two kilos so it is it's not something you stick in the corner of your camera bag and we come down to the platypods um, if you shoot full frame with fairly big lenses the max absolutely brilliant stable as anything will go from ridiculously low like this to about that height they're not designed for using around cities that much but as we've shown if you can lean them on something they're fantastic they do even have both of them um, little uh, screw heads in them there and there that you can screw screw them onto fence posts trees and the like for semi-permanent locations i'm not sure i would leave a tripod a, a thing of that value screwed against a, a tree but there you go and that brings me that down to the little platypod um uh, ultra it is tiny it's 110 kilos it, uh, kilos 110 grams it weighs nothing what happens on uneven ground you just shorten a leg there's a bit of uneven ground and you know you shorten a leg until it's completely stable i carry this in my camera bag all the time i carry this little manfrotto tripod in the in, in a little corner of it between them they weigh next to nothing the only thing i'll say against pa platypods is they're supplied with these spikes I have ripped my arms on those spikes and to screw them in and out takes an age. I just went on the internet and bought some little screws. I've got them in different lengths. Uh, I've got particularly short ones for this so I can work really low to the ground. You can just by screwing them up. They work just as well as that. It's a quarter inch width with thread. Same as your tripod head and you don't scratch them, scratch yourself on them. Also these tops don't stick up as much as the rubber ones there's a new platypod out uh, called the extreme and you don't have the issue of having to screw the uh, spike in and out you just turn them through 90 degrees um, it seems quite a good thing i personally and it's only because i cut myself so many times because i'm uh, an umpty i'd probably still switch the spikes for little bolts like this um, but yeah what do you need all of them of course you do that's why i have so many little tripods and you'll know the ones you need they're absolutely brilliant and i hope you found this enjoyable and interesting and hopefully it won't cost you too much money but thanks for watching